Who can tell me what's so special about a silicone rectifier switch, also known as a thyristor? How do we turn the thyristor on? What do we do? How do we turn it on? We send a signal, right? I of G, we turn it on at alpha, or rather we'll see I of T does not equal zero at alpha. This is on, right? This is a short circuit. And then how do we turn it off? How do we turn it off? Can we control when it turns off? Zero crossing said, who said that? Jordan, yeah. It's gonna be off at zero volts. So we can control it. We can close this switch by sending a signal on the gate I, G of T. But then once it closes, it's going to clamp shut and it's going to turn off on its own when the voltage across it is temporarily zero. All right, let's look at it. Here's our input again. I'm going to zoom way in so we can trace this out. Here's our input VS of T in red. That's our AC sine wave. No difference. We're assuming 60 hertz, right? We've got zero. We've got pi. We've got two pi. And it's just doing its thing, oscillating to its positive peak, to its negative peak, to its positive peak, to its negative peak, right at the input. Now, we're going to send a signal to this thyristor at some angle alpha. This is called the firing angle. This is when we shoot a signal on the gate. This is the gate right here. That's why we call it the gate current IGFT. So look, right here at alpha, I of G is no longer zero, right? Before that, it was zero. At alpha, it's whatever this value is right here. Doesn't really matter, right? It's not equal to zero at alpha. <clears throat> so tell me, before alpha, is the thyristor open or closed? From zero to alpha, is the thyristor open or closed? Open, right? We have not fired the gate yet. All right, at alpha, we fire a gate. We send a short pulse, a quick boom. A little bit of current right here. What's that going to do? Is that going to open or close the thyristor? It's going to close it. Yeah, it's going to close it. So is there anything else? in the circuit besides the thyristor, when it closes, it's going to short circuit. It's going to act as a closed switch. So now VO of T is going to equal to what? VO of T is now in parallel with the input. It's going to equal VS of T. So, so we send a signal at alpha. The thyristor closes, putting the output in parallel with our input. <clears throat> so from alpha to pi, our output voltage equals, ha, not bad for freehand. Our output voltage equals our input voltage. What happens exactly at pi? What is Vs of t equal at pi? What is Vs of t equal at pi? It's exactly zero. It's a zero crossing. We prove it, sure. Any value for Vm, say it's 100 volts, times sine zero radian, sine of zero is zero. There's no voltage leaving this power supply for one itty bitty minuscule moment of time. So if there's no voltage here, <clears throat> what's my voltage across my thyristor? It's also zero. So what's the thyristor gonna do? The thyristor is gonna open. It's gonna open. So at pi, the voltage across our thyristor is equal to zero and it's gonna open. And it's gonna stay open until when? It's gonna stay open until when? Until the next, uh, until the next period of our firing angle, two pi plus alpha. It's gonna close again. And that cycle is just gonna repeat over and over and over. Sorry, that should not be there. Those are my notes from earlier. <clears throat> so look, I'm going to copy this. 
here's the output we just traced. We traced it on top of the S of T, right? But we just drew the output voltage V O of T. I'm going to make it orange to match the orange of that variable. What do you think the period is, is of V of T? Zero to two pi, right? Look, we trace zero to two pi, and I'm just dragging it over and over and over. Here, this is alpha plus two pi. Here's where the second uh, period of our firing angle starts, this vertical line, right? This is pi plus two pi. This is two pi plus two pi. This is four pi. That's our second period. See that? So look, here's our period of our thyristor output voltage. T equals 2 pi. <clears throat> All right. Before we have some fun over here on the left, there is another graph in the reference handbook. It's the voltage across the thyristor, VSCR. Where does this funky shape come from? From 0 to pi, <clears throat> is my thyristor open or is my thyristor closed? Is it open or closed? It's open. Great job. So if I stuck, I've got an open circuit from here to here. We're assuming there's some kind of load here, right? We're assuming there's a load here. No currents being drawn because I have an open circuit. What voltage am I going to read from here to here when the thyristor is open? I'm going to read positive on here. I'm going to read negative on here. Anytime the thyristor is open, it's in parallel. <clears throat> so let's see from zero to alpha it's open it's going to read the input voltage the voltage across it all right at alpha what happens to our thyristor does it open or close it closes so the if it's closed right here what's the voltage across a short circuit a closed switch it's equal to zero. So this goes way back down. It's going to stay zero until what? <clears throat> until we've gotten open, right? When does the thyristor open again? It's going to open at pi. Why is the thyristor going to open at pi? What's the input voltage equal to? at exactly pi. What's the VS of T of pi? Looks right here, zero, right? That's a zero. Trace all the way back, that's zero. So that the thyristor is gonna automatically open. It's gonna unclamp. And now that it's open, now it's in parallel again with our input voltage. VO of T equals zero because no current is flowing. So now again, it's open. So it's directly in parallel with VS of T. The thyristor is going to stay open until when? The thyristor, let's see how good I can trace this freehand. The thyristor is going to stay open, putting the thyristor in parallel with the power supply until when? Until 2 pi plus alpha, right? Until that gate current is fired again on the second period. And then it's going to short again. And of course, the voltage across a short circuit is zero. What did we just draw? We just drew the voltage across the thyristor. Ta-da. Neat, huh? Light bulb moment, said Javier. Yeah, it's fun drawing these. Uh, you can always trace what's happening on your input, depending on what kind of circuit it is. Let's see, this was, um, we'll say T plus alpha, right? Same thing as two pi plus alpha. That's when we fire the gate on the second repeating cycle. Just like this, our input voltage is cycling 
every two pi it cycles, whatever the firing angle is, it's going to fire at the same time relative to the period. Make sense? All right. <clears throat> well, let's figure out. We've got two formulas in the reference handbook. On page 34, we got a long one and a short one. Let's figure out where the short one comes from, and then we're going to try an example. All right, <clears throat> x of t. If I want to call this v out of t, I want to call this the not the average voltage, but the instantaneous output voltage across this DC load. What's it going to be? Look, here's v out of t. My maximum voltage is the same as the maximum voltage of my input, right? I've got Vm <clears throat> times sine omega t, except if I integrated this, I'm going to make this orange just so we know we're talking about the instantaneous output. If I integrate this without upper and lower limits, I'm going to get my input, right? I'm going to get my input. So let's look at the period. What do we say the period was of this waveform down here, of our output V of t? What's the period? 2 pi, right? So period is 2 pi. When I integrate it over 2 pi, where does the area under the curve start and where does it stop? What's my alpha? What's my A? Lower limit is going to be alpha. Upper limit B is going to be pi. A is alpha. B is pi. I'm going to make these orange again so everyone knows we're talking about the output. Look at this formula. What formula is this in the reference handbook? Where does this come from again? This is the X average integral formula. Remember what I said, watch out. They use zero to T to the period. That gets you in trouble. Look, period is two pi. Look, this is A is alpha, B is pi. Ta-da. So let's figure out how they go from this X average integral function how do they get the more simplified formula they also give us? Let's see. Let's move Vm outside the integral. Again, I'm not breaking any rules when I do that. The integral of a constant, <clears throat> we can move it out. What's the integral of sine by itself? Who can tell me again in the chat? Integral of sine x is negative cosine x. Great job, Zach. So I've got minus cosine. In this case, instead of x, our variable is omega t the angular frequency or the angular velocity. And then we're evaluating that from A to B, which in this case, for a single phase controlled half-wave rectifier is alpha to pi, as we just discovered. All right, how do we uh, simplify this? <clears throat> no change to Vm over 2 pi just yet. Uh, what is negative cosine pi equal to? Use your calculator if you're not comfortable with the shorthand. Negative cosine pi in radians is how much? That's equal to one. <clears throat> Remember, when I switch from my upper lower my upper limit B to my lower limit A, we subtract. We subtract. All right. What is negative cosine? plugging in alpha for omega t equal to. We've got negative cosine of alpha, right? One negative times a negative is a positive. Ta-da. Here's where this funky looking formula comes from. Again, we're just evaluating the X average integral formula by plugging in our upper and lower limits and integrating sine. That's all it is. Ash said, ah, all right, let's try it. Calculate the average voltage output of a controlled that tells me what's in the circuit. We've got S, an SCR, or we can call it a thyristor. I restore. I think I spelled that right. In other words, I can say the average voltage output of an SCR half wave rectifier or a thyristor half wave rectifier or a just simply controlled half wave rectifier. Fed from an AC power supply with a maximum voltage of 200, let's do 225 volts. 
and a gate firing angle of, we're going to do pi over four. What's our gate firing angle? I'm not sure why that's why there's a dead space right there. What's firing angle? What uh, variable is that? That's alpha. What's this? Power supply with a maximum voltage of, what is this? This is VM. So look, we've got VM equals 225. That's this VM right here, 225 VM. Same VM right here, 225. It's the VM of the power supply being passed through the circuit, 225 VM. Alpha is now, this is pi over four radians. <clears throat> yeah, it does look like a, like a white text box. Cool. Is that from earlier? Hmm, nope, can't grab it. All right, up to you. You can use the long formula. Or you can use a short one. I'm going to use a short one. So short one is maximum voltage over two pi, just copying right from here, one plus cosine alpha. Maximum voltage is how much? 225 volts over two pi times one plus cosine pi over four radians. Let's see, fraction sign, 225 over two pi. Parentheses, one plus, not tan, there we go, cosine pi over four. We get about what, 61.1? About 61.1? 61.1 volts. That's our average voltage output. Good job, Alex, Noel, take two, Alan, Rule, Rachel, Ken, Cole, Ashley, Matthew, Joel, who else got it? Is it Varun or Varun? Varun, did I say that right? V-A-R-U-N. Good job, Taylor, Levi, I, Jordan, Josh, Erica. <clears throat> Great. All right. <clears throat> Our average voltage output, does it exist in real life? Does it exist in real life? No, look, VM is all the way up here, 225. So VO is like, <clears throat> excuse me, VO, our output voltage is way down here. Here's VO. 61.1 volts, right? VO. Easy, right? Easy, 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 easy. All right. Just like before, we looked at a half wave, then a full wave, uncontrolled rectifier. Now we're dealing with controlled rectifiers. Here's a half wave. Are you ready for the full wave? Here's the full wave controlled single phase rectifier. 